What's up everybody? Before we get into this review, I want to ask you once again, if you're already subscribed to this channel, thank you so much for doing that. If you're not subscribed, please do so by clicking this button right here on my face or that subscribe button that you can see down below. Now, without any further ado, let's talk about the 910 version 2 from New Balance. <music> What's up guys, Brandon here from Gearist. Today we're going to be getting down and dirty with the 910 version 2 from New Balance. One thing that I really, really like is getting my feet in or getting my hands on a product which has had a complete overhaul. This is regardless of if I've actually tried the previous version or not. And the reason for this is because I know that it means the brand is listening. It means they've listened to their customers, they've listened to reviewers, they've listened to wear testers, and they've gone back to the drawing board to see what they can do to make that product meet the standards that people said it might not have met the last time or see what problems there were and address those. And such is the case with the 910 V2 from New Balance. Now I didn't have my feet in the previous ones, but from what I understand, this is a reimagining of that shoe. So let's just get into it. Starting of course with the outsole, this is a full contact outsole. As you can see there, there are no cutaways for the arch or anything like that, which means you're going to be in full contact with the ground when you're sitting flat on the ground. The other thing is that the rubber on this outsole is made from New Balance's HHR or hydrohesion rubber, which means means it is meant specifically to be very sticky. The lugs, as you can see here, are arranged in kind of a weird sort of a triangular pattern. You may see that this lug shape looks kind of similar and that's because we've seen it before in the Leadville, the New Balance 1210 V2, which you can see right here. Now the reason I'm not showing you that shoe in live time is because the shoe is green and that is a green screen and it would just disappear. So here's a picture of it. You can see the lug similarity, how there's this kind of triangle, but with the tips kind of, you know, cut off there to make a more angular edge to it. Additionally, these lugs are offset from one another, so you'll notice that they're not just completely horizontal rows going across. They're actually offset like this, and that's to give you the most amount of traction depending on the way your foot is landing. As it pertains to that, you'll notice that there is quite a bit of flexibility, and that all starts with the outsole. I mean, look, I can curl this bad boy up, but it doesn't look like you should be able to. There's quite a bit of foam back here, and so the flexibility is lost kind of in the rear, probably third of the foot, but even up to like right about here, you can actually fold it pretty good and that starts with the outsole. As far as performance of the shoe goes, I took this on a wide variety of trails, including some really well groomed, just buffed out trail, some single tracks, some paths and things like that and it worked very, very well. Of course, I mean there's not really much of a challenge to it in that case, but when it got onto trickier terrain, I have to admit that I was not expecting much, but it held very well. Again, I think I'd like to contribute or attribute that rather to the offset of the lug pattern because these aren't particularly deep. They're about four millimeter deep lugs. They're not super, super cleat like or anything like that. So when you get on looser terrain, it's not going to grip as well. We'll get into this a little bit more in the ride section. It's not going to grip as well, but on rocky stuff, these really perform very, very well. And also in case you're wondering, which you probably are, how do they hold up? Well, again, we get about 35, 40 miles in a shoe, depending on the shoe, depending on the time of year and things like that. But keep in mind that we've got a huge rotation of shoes. So getting more than that is really, really challenging and kind of prohibitive from a time standpoint. But with about 35 miles in this, there is very little wear to speak of. Some of the lugs up in this area, they have little nicks where rocks have actually kind of cut the rubber a little bit, but they haven't seemed to chip off or anything like that. It's just kind of, you know, it's nicked it. I mean, this has been on some really just gnarly terrain and it's holding up very, very well. Into the midsole of the shoe, the Revlite foam of New Balance, we've been talking about this in years past, once again, makes an appearance in this shoe. Now it's in an eight millimeter setup with a 20 millimeter stack in the heel and a 12 millimeter stack in the forefoot. I have to say that it actually kind of looks like it's about that much. And you know, this is black foam, so it kind of skews the eye a little bit. It doesn't really feel like that. And as I've said in the past, in trail shoes, because you tend to be much more on the forefoot, you're in a much more kind of agile athletic position, you're not really gonna feel like you're in a higher drop shoe or anything like that. That and this is only two millimeters outside of my favored zone of six millimeters and below. Those flex screws, which you can see here, kind of appear in the outsole at first. Those go at least four millimeters or so into the midsole, which is really, really nice, and that's what accounts for a lot of that flexibility. I really like it a lot. Now, something else that I should mention, this has the rock stop plate kind of right in there. You can't really see it, but it's right up here in the forefoot. Does a fantastic job. Does not deaden ground feel. Yes, you're going to feel rocks. This isn't something that's meant to be like a plate of armor in between you and a rock. 
rock. It's something that's meant to protect your foot but still give you a good sense of the ground and for that, this does a really solid job. The 910 V2 is something where cushioning is actually part of the name of the game. Now is this as hyper feel as some of more minimalist options from New Balance? Absolutely not. And when you're on smooth trail, you're probably going to feel like your ground feel is a little bit deadened, which I did, but that's not the fault of the shoe. You're just on a smooth trail. Again, once you hit something with some rocks or some crags or anything like that, you're going to be able to pick up on that ground and it's actually really nice. Now, one of the things is because this has more cushioning, this is going to be something that's a really good option for heavier runners if you're looking for that amount of cushion to react to your body instead of a more minimalist platform. This is going to be able to still take you a lot of miles. I would not hesitate to take this in ultra distance if that's what I was looking for. The upper of the shoe is kind of an interesting mixed bag for me. On the one hand, it looks like there's a lot going on which contributes to the weight of this shoe. My size 11s come in at 12 ounces per shoe, which is no joke. Just for reference sake, the men's size 9 comes in at a 10.8 ounce. So this is not a light shoe. However, much like the midsole and the outsole of this, this is something that's meant to be super durable over the long haul, so they've built it with that in mind. The mesh itself is a dual layer mesh where the outside you can see there is quite open, so there's a lot of uh, breathability in through there, but on the back side, it's a much more fine mesh, which is going to keep out any debris and things that might want to find its way into your shoe. You might still find really super fine dust in there, but even on some really, really dusty and dry stuff this summer, I didn't really feel anything, so no big deal there. With the support structure of this, New Balance is actually steered away for the most part from the bonded overlays that we've become so used to seeing, especially in its very, very close relative, that 1210 New Balance 1220 V2, which you can see right here, again, where it's almost entirely bonded overlays. In this, there are basically none. These are all stitched on overlays, all up here, and yeah, I mean, it's just right back here, there's a little bit of bonding that goes along around the backside of the heel counter, but apart from that, everything is stitched on. Now, why is that? Well, on the one hand, it is definitely heavier, so you've got to account for that. But again, this is a long haul shoe, so that would make sense that if you're going for that, that you're not going to necessarily trust all the time, or some people won't trust, you know, just bonded overlays to stay on water crossings and, and really a lot of high heat and up and down and things like that. So again, I have to think that this really lining itself up for that long haul, super, super durable shoe. As for protection, this shoe, apart from that rock plate we mentioned a few minutes ago, you've got this guy right here. This is a rubber compound known as New Balance's Toe Protect, and it goes all the way from the front side of the arch on one side to the front side of the arch on the other side and looks as though it makes a little bit of an appearance back here in reinforcing the heel counter which forms a really nice heel cup. I took this on some really kind of off camera stuff and felt really locked down and I enjoyed that. It was a it was a solid experience. I didn't feel myself sliding all over in the shoe so that was really good. Speaking of that heel counter, this is one of my pet peeves. You know, it is certainly comfortable but there's too much foam here. There's just an unnecessary amount of foam. Now, there's a good amount in the tongue. I mean, you don't feel the laces or anything like that. Even over longer runs, you're not going to feel anything. Back here, there's just too much foam for me. I think this could be compressed down a little bit. It does add some weight. So, I mean, at 12 ounces, you could certainly stand to shave a little bit of weight. So that's something to take into consideration. Now let's talk about fit. This guy right here, this size 11, fits me perfectly. You know, all their, they're right at industry standard with their sizes and all that kind of stuff. So no issues there. You shouldn't have to go up or down. Now this shoe is built on New Balance's PL8 Last, which is a more performance or oriented last than their 1210 V2, the Leadville that I keep talking about. What's interesting about that is that when I hear that most of the time a more performance oriented last, I expect something to be a little more snug, a little more kind of racy fit. And that's not really what I found in this shoe. In the heel counter, there's plenty of room for my average foot. It feels very good, but if you've got a low volume foot, you're probably going to have to lock down quite a bit. I'm not sure that the pretty rigid heel counter is going to allow you to do that. Now there is room up here in the throat to cinch down. It's a very comfortable midfoot on me personally. I like it, but again, if you've got a lower volume foot, you're going to have to squeeze down. Now, the tongue is gusseted about halfway up, so right about there. If you've got a wider foot, you should be able to fit in this pretty well. Moving into the toe box, I felt very comfortable in this. On paper, it would make sense that this was more slimmed down than that in the Leadville, but I didn't feel that at all. My toes had plenty of room for a wiggle and splay and all that, and it was very comfortable. 
comfortable. I think the key to the fit of this when you get into it is making sure that the back third of the foot, probably back third, back half of the foot, is locked down the way that you want it to. Because I can see if you've got even kind of on just on this side of a lower volume of the kind of average foot, a slightly lower volume foot, you might slide around a bit just because there's just a lot of shoe here sometimes and uh, you're gonna have to cinch down quite a bit. So make sure you play around with the laces and get it dialed to your foot before you head out there. And something else that people are going to love is that this guy right here comes in up to 4E width. So this can be a very wide shoe for you. This is a D and I feel like it can fit a wider foot, but this comes up to a 4E, which is basically a square. So <laughs> if you have a super wide foot, try it on. Let's talk about the ride of the shoe and where it's going to be most at home. Now some people are going to get this as their all around trail shoe and that's totally fine. It can certainly crush some groomed trails but is that necessary? Is all this shoe necessary for that much trail? Probably not but again not everyone's going to go out and buy pairs of shoes depending on the type of trail they're running that day. Now once you get onto more rocky and angular terrain this thing really shines I think but it's kind of a juxtaposition because where you've got this really kind of flexible forefoot, flexible half, flexible two-thirds front of the shoe, you're going to have some torsional rigidity in the back. This isn't going to work with you as well in terms of being flexible. On the one hand, that's good because you want that amount of control over the trail, but it's going to kind of throw you a little bit when you get in and you feel this flexible up here and you're like, oh, this is great. And then you step on something where the rear foot needs to be flexible and it's not quite there. Now, that's okay. And a lot of people I feel like are really going to like that, especially where you're looking for some kind of roll stability in a longer run. Again, an ultra distance run or even, you know, 20 mile or 15 mile or something like that where you're going long, you might want that. And as I mentioned earlier, those four millimeter deep lugs are a real bright spot for me. They did very, very well on a variety of terrain. Again, looser stuff, kind of like dirt on an ascent or descent. It doesn't do as well because it can't really get down in there and get purchased the way that something with like a longer cleat like cleat lug might do, but it does a good job regardless, especially on rockier stuff. I really like that. I've said several times in this review that this is a lot of shoe, but there's a caveat to that, and that is that it is subjective to the runner. There are some flyweight runners that like more shoe, that really like a lot of cushioning. I mean, if there weren't, brands like Hoka wouldn't be around and being worn by a ton of even lightweight people. But this is also going to be great for somebody who might be heavier, might need a bit more cushioning over a long run, or even not a long run, and this is going to be a good shoe for that. The price point on this is also solid. It comes in at $110, which puts it nicely kind of even at the bottom end of its peers. So definitely something to look out for. And I think that if you check the description, you may even be able to find it for a little bit cheaper than that. With fall here and winter well on its way, especially in an El Nino year, you're going to want a solid running shoe for getting dirty and out on those trails. And this is something that's going to be able to take you there. Is it going to be great on ice? No. But as I keep saying, no trail shoe is good on ice unless it is spiked. But on snow, this should really do quite well. We'll see. I might try to give you an update once we've got some snow, but I just really think this is a solid all-around shoe. A little much shoe for some people, and that again, the juxtaposition of having a flexible front half and a pretty inflexible with some torsional rigidity things in the back half might throw you in terms of feeling, but once you get used to it, I feel like it's going to be a shoe that is a very approachable model for a lot of people. Guys, please don't forget to like and favorite this video, and our question for you guys today is, what do you prefer in a trail shoe? Do you like a lot of cushioning and if you do how does that correlate to your body weight let us know down in the comments section below now if you guys have any questions about this or any of our reviews please don't hesitate to email info at gearist.com or you can contact us on all of our social media outlets right over there my personal Strava Facebook Twitter Instagram the YouTube channel which you should subscribe to right this second right down there at the bottom and you can also leave a comment in the comment section below we'd love to hear from you guys if you guys want to see something reviewed or want to see us go and do something in particular or ask Ask Gearist or Gearist Daily segment, definitely let us know in the comment section below. We'd love to get back to you and see what we can do. Also, don't forget to hashtag your pictures, hashtag I'm a Gearist, and we can feature them on an upcoming series that we've got here on YouTube that'll be coming in the next couple weeks, so keep an eye out for that. Once again, guys, thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.